Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 4. And he said unto me, Son of man, the title given to Ezekiel and to Jesus Christ, Go. Our God is a God of go. Jesus said, Go in all the world and preach the gospel. He tells Jeremiah to go. He tells Ezekiel to go. He tells Elijah to go. Get thee into the house of Israel. Now this will be a repeat of the commission. And speak with my words unto them. Don't you tell them they're your words. Don't you tell them worldly words. You tell them my words. For thou art not sent to a people of strange speech. <coughs> and of a hard language. Hebrew. Aramaic. Now you ever, you ever think about the thing with, with Jonah? Jonah was called to go to Nineveh. The Ninevites did not speak Hebrew for all of them. In the book of Acts, they went out in the language of the different people. Especially Acts chapter 2, when all these different people, they're gathered together, the Jews, they went, wow, we hear our language. You got to, what did Jonah do? Beyond the story that people don't believe Jonah, what language? Did they understand Hebrew? Or did Jonah know the language of Assyria? Or did the Holy Spirit give him tongues? And the enemy knew the knew the language of the people because when uh, I believe it's Hezekiah, and the enemy comes in, no, no, don't speak Hebrew. The men on the wall are listening. And when you read your Bible, you got to ask your, these questions. Ezekiel's going to a people of the language Ezekiel speaks. And we learn from the book of Daniel later. Because Daniel's in Babylon. Daniel has started where Ezekiel is. And they're trying to get rid of the diet. They're trying to get rid of the language. They're trying to get rid of the name of the Jewish people. And evidently, some of the people are already getting the Babylonian Aramaic language. Not too many people of a strange speech. You know, Spanish, Chinese, Russian, all the dialects of the world and of a hard language you know English is a hard language English is a language is very hard for people because it's a multiple of all the languages and then hard languages it's got rules that it breaks I before E well except for F to C and you add an S to pluralize a subject Except for chief, knife, whose words thou canst not understand. So, Ezekiel, one thing we learned is he does not have the knowledge of tongues, or very limited knowledge. Surely, that's an interesting word that goes all the way back. To Genesis 2. Assure. God likes that word surely. I wonder what the modern Bible said. Had I sent thee to them. They would, they would have hearkened unto thee. Look what God just said. If I send you to a people you can't speak their language. They would hear what you said. Now, 
I don't know if you got the cross reference to that while reading. That's Jonah. Jonah went to Nineveh, and I think he preached five words, and the entire city got saved. Naaman, a Syrian, a Gentile, listens to the word of God to Elijah. God says, hey, I would send you to the Gentiles. They would listen better than my people, your people. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel is impotent. There is no shame, shameless, and hard-hearted. Now look at Jeremiah. We're going back to Jeremiah, chapter six. Verse 19, 619. Hear, O earth, God speaking to the earth. Behold, I will bring an evil upon this people, the Judah, Judah, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my word, nor to my law, but rejected it. Chapter 7, Jeremiah 7. 27 Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Now as Jeremiah is in Judah preaching, and Ezekiel off in the land of Babylon, the two prophets together speaking to God's people, they ain't going to listen. Ezekiel 3. They're not going to listen. So when you're in a public ministry, somebody comes up to you and says, well, they're not going to hear you. Yes, correct. That's scripture. What? I don't understand what you said. Oh, you're not a Bible reader, are you? You see, people in religions and churches and Baptists today, God's going to send you where tons of people are going to get saved. Tons of people. No, God, God told Ezekiel and God told Jeremiah, I'm sending you to a group of people that won't listen. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many will go that route. Stray is the gate that leads to life. The few. All the people in Israel and the main body of people that stayed with Jesus were the women in the twelve, and one of the twelve betrayed him. Paul, missionary journey, three missionary journeys, well, all these churches he started. And when he writes his death letter to Timothy, only Luke is with him. And so when Christians, you're supposed to have results. We read church today. They want results for their conference coming up. That's anti-scriptural. He came unto his own, and his own received them not. That's the commission of Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, they took the, oh I can hear, I can see, I can walk, I have no more leprosy. And what's the Baptist church to do? Oh, you got chicken, you got mashed potato, we'll give you a car, we'll, 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 keep, we'll pay your medical bill, we'll pay your, your phone bill. That's why that stuff is not scripture. I mean, we're to help, but it's not salvation. So, I mean, you would think, I mean, really just think about it. God is sending Ezekiel, what we're studying Ezekiel right now. I don't know how God sounds, but Ezekiel, yes, Lord, I got something for you to do. All oh, right, let's go. I mean, Isaiah says, send me, Lord. You're going to go to a group of people. All oh, right. 
They're going to speak your language. It's not a hard language. Cool. Don't need to go to college to learn a language. They're not going to. They're not going to listen to you. Think about it like this. I, I'm taking college courses, though all of it's online. It's not in the classroom. But my, my daughter went to nursing class at the same time. Think about her going to nursing class. I don't know where structure's name is, but let's think about the, the dean of the school called her and said, listen, we got 35 young ladies who want to be a nurse or CNA. Oh, wow, that's a, that's a great number of class. And they all speak English. Cool. Every one of those girls in that classroom are not going to listen to what you say. What? That's what you would say. I'm going to open up a restaurant. We're going to have tables. I'm going to have waiters and waitresses. And people are going to come in. They're going to sit down. And my waiters and waitresses are going to go to the table and say, what can I order for you? I'm not listening to you. Think about that. You know, God always asks the hard things in life. Jesus has a man and it says his, his arm is uh, lame. I forget the exact word. And Jesus says to that man, stretch forth your hand, your arm. Uh, Jesus, he can't. But with God, all things are possible. So, verse 7, But I had made the house of Israel, but the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. That's a great commission. <clears throat> You know, i got more people at the farmer's market of six years who do like me. We have met one, we reunited with a Christian friend today. They do pray for me. They do honor. They do respect what I'm doing. And they're happy. And there are other people who are not happy. Ezekiel and Jeremiah have everybody against them. In Jeremiah, at least we see Baruch, an Ethiopian eunuch. But I don't see anybody with Ezekiel following him. I don't know where Daniel Daniel's in the area. Daniel's in Babylon. He's been secured into, you know, the king's residence. Ezekiel's in this awful little, I forgot what the name, uh, by the river Shebar. He's not quite in Babylon, but he's on his way to Babylon. They will not hearken unto thee, for all the house of Israel are impotent and hard-hearted. Behold, what a great commitment, what a great commitment. Behold, I have set thy face. Strong against their faces. So, Ezekiel's going to have a head-to-head, -head, face to face confrontation with these people. And when, I'm not a fan of boxing and all that, but when they advertise boxers that this great boxing event is coming up, or wrestling, as fake as this is, they will put on that poster, they will put both their face, and they got their and that's what God's saying right here. Your face is going to be hard. Their face is going to be hard. These are Jewish faces of brown. They are angry people. They are disrespectful people to God. And to Moses, the men of God, they rebel. They want this. They want. Listen, they gave Moses a hard time about food and water. They gave Herod a hard time and Pilate a hard time. And they got big noses. This is the people that Jesus came to. Jesus was an outstanding character of who the Jews are. Paul says the Jews are the enemy of the gospel, but we're still to love them, we're not to curse them, and we're to pray for them. 
And they're very hard to get along. I know a couple of Jewish friends. I just had one right now. He's he got off in weird doctors and stuff like that. Okay, buddy, I gotta go. See you. And thy forehead strong against their foreheads. One forehead against foreheads. One face against faces. And still he goes. And there are Christians today, well, I can't talk, I can't. And then they back out. Man, you told your your, your, your 2021 Christian lad to see in church, I'm going to send you a group of, and they're, no, 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 Lord, I ain't going to do it. I, I, want, I want numbers, I want a lot of people to love me. That's not scripture. Moreover, he said unto me, this is Ezekiel telling us what God told him. So, so far, Ezekiel's like, okay. Because Jews love that challenge. Paul loved that challenge. Paul, before he was saved, as saw tooth and nail against Christians who lived for Jesus Christ. And then when he got saved, tooth or nail, Jews, Gentiles, even Christians themselves, I'm, I'm going to do right. I'm going to live right. Paul was not your panty ways preacher. Like many preachers are today. Check them out. They got silk and, and, and panties on. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive them in thy heart. Before you said anything to them, you better believe the word. Don't you get up and say, I believe the King James is, is the word of God, and you don't believe it. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Oh, the very word of God. Eh, you know, you know this, should, this word should be that. Uh, that kind of thing. You know, that's not really in there. It shouldn't be in there. Uh, a better rendering would be in the Greek, in the Hebrew. Shut up! You have not received God's word in your heart. How much of a King James Bible believer are you, Stanley? I believe when we all get to heaven, God's going to give us the King James Bible. Even to the ones with the modern Bible. Hey, you should have had the best. And maybe he'll have me hand them out. Because he knows I'd probably do it with, with, with a little smile. But you better believe in that heart. What I tell you. Because if you don't believe in your heart, you're not going to please God and they will see through your hypocrisy. A lost man will see through the hypocrisy of someone trying to be religious. No matter how much you hide, how much you dress up, what you put on, what you smell like. If it's not in your heart, and hear with thy ears. Israel heard. Jesus said they have ears to hear, but they hear, they listen not. You don't have a public ministry if you don't know what that means. For people to hear, but they don't listen. If you don't know what that, I know what that is. And go. Is that go again? God's a God of verbs. Get thee to them of the captivity. All right, head over to Babylon. Where they are. Now he's, he's over by the river uh, Shebar. 
I don't know if it tell, uh He's not quite in Babylon yet. Where he is, there's a layover. King Nebuchadnezzar has set up this post. It's like a stopover. You know, if you're going to take an airplane from Florida to California, you might have to land at another airport before and get on another plane. God tells Ezekiel, get in Babylon of the captivity. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Ezekiel. And the children of thy people, the Jews, and speak unto them, and tell them. Well, that's where Christians have a problem. Well, I can't say nothing. I can tell them anything I want to tell them on the phone, but if I'm going to speak, I can't speak the word of God. I've heard many garbage words of no value of Christians. And out of those same Christians, I've heard nothing for them to speak about Jesus. And uh, the Bible says, every idle word man shall give it account. Thus saith the Lord God. Alright, here's another remarkable thing about Ezekiel's ministry. Whether they will hear, whether they will forbear. You preach what I tell you to preach, the words I tell you. And whether they hear or whether they don't hear has nothing to do with what you do. Apply that application to the Christian today. Go out and tell people about Jesus. Preach the gospel. Plant the seed. Water the seed. But it is God that gives the increase. Imagine that. That same principles in the Old Testament. The boring book, book that people don't like to read. Ezekiel has the same commission as a Christian. Go out there and tell them what I say. But you are not the one doing the results. I am God said. Go out there and preach the gospel. You don't save them. And remarkable to me, a church was, oh, you know, we got three people saved last week. You didn't do nothing. If you got them saved, they're still lost and going to hell. Then the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, took them up. We saw that with John the other day in the book of Revelation. That runs us parallel again. Revelation, Ezekiel. You know, when we get to heaven, Ezekiel, Daniel, and John are going to sit down and have a great conversation with each other that many Christians today won't even know about. And us Christians who do study, we're, we're going to sit back like, uh -huh. Oh, I love the book of Revelation, but I don't like the Old Testament. Yeah, but the Old Testament is in the book of Revelation. In the Re book of Revelation, it's in the Old Testament. And I heard behind me a voice of great rushing. By the way, that adamant harder. That is, it's hard. You will find that word in verse 9, like in is the name they give to diamonds. Now that's a hard forehead. The people at the farmer's market see me as that. Won't you just go away? No. We've called the police. I'm back. We've got the DJs. I'm back. I told you to shut up. I'm back. We put the barricades up. I'm back. We moved to a little location. I'm back. We get in your face and cut your face out. I'm back. God wants me there. God has not told me move on. He hasn't shut it to give me another road. So the great rushing doesn't say water. You would think it's water, but it's just a rushing. Of wind? 
If it's of wind and not water, that spirit and the rushing would be John 3, when Jesus likes the new birth of the spirit, but I don't know because it's rushing. There are many different kinds of things that rush, but wind and water. All the cross references you can get. Blessed, but John would describe it as rushing of water. Blessed be the glory of the God from his place. That's what the great voice of rushing said. Blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. Heaven, the throne. But he's also in this chariot kind of cherubim creature of a mobile wheel mercy seat that has been gone ever since Dagon bowed down before the ark. Because the men, when they brought the ark into the into the Israel, they looked into the ark. You can't look into the ark if the mercy seat was there. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another. <coughs> this goes back to chapter 1, those creatures. And the noise of the wheels, <laughs> chapter 1, over against them. The wheels were over against the creatures. Next to. And a noise of great rushing. Come on, Ezekiel, rushing what? So the voice of that great rushing, blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place, and then it's, it's reference to this vehicle that the living creatures are on with a throne, with a firmament that we've read. And a great rushing. And then so the Spirit, there's this, there's this, I'm going to believe what, what the context of the Scripture is, that Spirit of the great rushing is wind. And if you run the reference Jesus said, when it comes, when he's talking to Nicodemus, to be born again, it describes it as wind and the spirit. And you know not which way the wind, neither know you the, the way of the spirit. Maybe Ezekiel doesn't know which way to what this rushing is doing. That would be perfect to John chapter John chapter three. The Spirit took me up and took me away. Almost like a rapture. <laughs> but he's not brought to heaven. I went in bitterness. That's a weird word to be used by Ezekiel. What's the bitterness? God just told him he's going to a group of people, his own people, and they're not going to listen to him. I don't think it's the ministry that God's given him that he's angry about. I think it's the ministry that his people won't listen to. And that Jesus stood off of the place and he wept over Jerusalem. In the heat of my spirit. So it's different. The spirit is different from my spirit. Your spirit is not the Holy Spirit. Ezekiel in the heat of his spirit. He's angry. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Ezekiel's not too happy. And we're not told why. What? Then I came to them in the captivity of Tel Abe. That Tel is a mound, a mount, a hill. 
And when you hear archaeologists talk about Tel Aviv, there's a hill there, and that hill is old civilizations, old old cities, old towns. And they dig into that mountain, they dig into that hill, that mound, and that's where they find all the treasures and clay pots and that dwelt by the river Chiba. So this is a, a drop-off place. This is a stopover on the way of going to Babylon. And I sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days. And we're going to stop right there. Ezekiel's heart has been, I don't know, wounded. Or, God, what kind of ministry are you giving me? But we're going to get into Lord willing tomorrow night. We're going to go into the great illustration of the watchman. And when we get into the watchman, realize where Ezekiel is now. He's bitter. He's in heat. He's astonished. And he's been told by God, you're going to people, your own people, and they're not going to listen to you. And when we get to the watchman, it's almost like Ezekiel's like, I don't want to do it. But you're the watchman. And you better do what I tell you to do. If you don't, there's consequences. And there are many Christians today when they find out after they got saved where to go tell our family. Oh, I don't want to get out. Oh, they're going to hate me. I'm going to get out of will. I'm going to make Uncle Leon all upset with me. My boss is going to fire me. The co workers won't sit down and have their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with me. No way. No! But I'll talk about sports, I'll talk about the movies, I'll talk about what was on television. You want me to talk about God? God, you want me to love her, my, my wife? You want me to listen to that man get up and rant and rave? 